you are live. A fault has occurred. Please try again later. Damn it. Maybe YouTube still works. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this and I'll see if uh, if the stream is actually being recorded. Uh, so um, continuing the work of my motor controller driver, uh, and uh, in this uh, video I will continue to implement the support for the actual for driving the actual power stage in the firmware. Uh, and um, for this we'll, we are gonna need uh, several timers. Uh, we have one timer that's reading the encoder, one timer that's reading the Hall sensor. Uh, one timer that's actually controlling the PWM to the uh, to the power stage here, and uh, several GPIOs and several uh, analog inputs, uh, which sense uh, the different quantities that are important to sense. Uh, so um, quite a few things uh, that all need to work together, and uh, I want this to be as generic code as possible, so that I can easily instantiate two different drivers, one for this one and one for this drive. Uh, and uh, they're going to be using different timers, but uh, in terms of logic, they're exactly the same. Hello, Damien. How are you doing today? Did you figure out your problem with, uh, with the ESP chip? source code here. So what I've done is um, create a rough sketch of how I want things to be configured. Uh, so the code that actually reads this device tree here uh, for the timers, so the section that uh, is responsible for the timers, is not actually implemented. Uh, but I still wanted to kind of uh, lay out roughly how I want to be able to configure the timers. And uh, also there is uh, a section for the ADC and a section for the um, for the HAL sensor, uh, HAL sensor timer, and the encoder timer. And uh, we should be able to just use the same uh, driver to configure the timers in different modes, uh, and then to easily um, uh, retrieve the generic interface uh, that corresponds to the, the type of mode that the timer is in. For example, we can have a generic interface for, uh, let's say, um, encoder counter. And uh, that will allow um, any part of the application to generically just read the, the value of the encoder, regardless of uh, which timer it is bound to, uh, regardless which um, uh, type of encoder it is, uh, whether it's an ITC encoder or an SPI encoder or whatever. Uh, it's going to still be the same interface so that we minimize the, the amount of code that we have to change uh, for um, different implementations of the same functionality. Uh, and then we have also the driver for uh, for the motor, so I, I call it the motor, uh, but uh, it's actually the driver for the power stage drive chip, the DRV8302. And this driver is responsible for resetting the chip, uh, monitoring any uh, errors, setting the gain, uh, setting the uh, overcurrent modes, and, um, and basically just uh, controlling the, the other peripherals that, uh, that are necessary uh, to be able to control the motor. So in this case, I basically add links to, uh, to the timers that are responsible for different functions uh, and also to the ADC. Um, and uh, the next step is, of course, to implement this functionality so that we can actually uh, get this code working and so that we can actually get some output on the motor, uh, on the motor pins, on the motor output connector. Uh, so I think that uh, probably the most reasonable thing to do right now is to uh, start with the timer implementation. Uh, because this will allow us to, to actually output some kind of P PWM waveform to the, uh, to the output of the, uh, to the, to the pins that correspond to the channels of, uh, of these timers. Uh, so I'm going to create a driver for the timer. Uh, and I'm going to do it in lib firmware uh, under the STM32 part. Uh, because this is uh, highly specific to STM32 chip. Uh, everything that we do uh, in the configuration of the timer is um, uh, using a specific um, functions that are uh, and specific defines that are actually um, uh, only relevant for STM32F4 chips. 
uh, and uh, it looks like I already have a driver for the timers. Uh, so I'm gonna check what uh, this driver actually does. So I have a I have a driver that um, is not very generic. Uh, it it has a implementation here of um, certain timer modes um, and. Um, uh, it is able to initialize a specific timer peripheral, but uh, still it's, it, it needs a little bit more work. It needs to be able to uh, initialize the timers in different modes uh, and to, uh, to be configured uh, entirely from the device tree uh, without requiring any changes to the code uh, depending on whatever mode we want the timer to be in. And also we need to add some, uh, some code that will add interfaces uh, to the, like, that will register the interfaces for uh, specific function that the timer is performing. So for example, if it's an encoder timer, uh, then uh, we need to register, uh, for example, uh, either a serial interface or maybe a memory interface uh, that will allow us uh, to read the encoder in a generic fashion, or maybe even an encoder interface. Uh, I want to keep the, the number of classes of different devices to a minimum, because it uh, requires uh, basically copying a lot of code uh, to just implement this functionality of aggregating uh, a specific class of devices. Uh, so if I can, um, if it makes sense to, for example, make the encoder um, a device uh, a serial uh, interface, uh, then I would do that. Uh, so every time you would read, um, every time you would read four bytes from the serial interface, uh, you would get your next uh, encoder readings, for example. But um, it also ca can make sense to, to implement this as a memory device so that we can just address, uh, we can just read uh, like the first 32-bit uh, integer uh, from this memory device and that would be always our encoder reading. Uh, but the important thing is to, is to keep it generic uh, so that the same interface can be used in many different drivers and they don't care about the actual implementation of uh, this interface. And that's how I made um, uh, pretty much all of the drivers work. Uh, for example, for the serial ports, I have a serial interface, and it doesn't really matter which uh, hardware the serial interface is uh, implemented on. Anything that uses a serial interface, like the console driver, uh, is only concerned about uh, using the, the abstract interface. And there are very good ways to do this in C, uh, which are based around the container of macro. Uh, if you've ever looked at uh, Linux source code, you know the uh, typical use of this, uh, of this macro. Uh, and basically what it does is it allows you to get the pointer to the containing object, which contains the, the structure that uh, the pointer is pointing to, uh, which in turn allows a very uh, flexible way, a very type-safe way uh, of retrieving uh, the pointer to the actual data structure based on the pointer to the uh, virtual function table. Uh, so uh, that's, that's the main concept in uh, uh, implementing abstract interfaces uh, in C. And it's a pretty simple concept to grasp uh, once you start using it. Uh, so you can have a look at, at how I do it uh, when I start implementing an interface. Uh, and then uh, if, you, if you can follow that, you can probably apply the same technique to your own code. Uh, okay, so let, let's, let's have a look here what we have. We have uh, the interrupt handlers uh, and we have the uh, timer uh, probe method. And actually, I'm going to rename this. I don't want this to be called timer, I want this to be called Tim. And uh, the first property uh, that I get here is uh, the reg property. 
which is set to the timer that, uh, that I'm going to use. Uh, I have a special set of headers for the device tree, specifically for the device tree, because uh, the device tree cannot uh, accept things like casting to uh, uint32, uh, which the stm32 library does a lot. Uh, so it's better to um, create a set of headers that are specific for the device tree, uh, which basically defines the same um, values for the symbols as the um, uh, stm32 headers, uh, but they are greatly simplified. They don't have any um, definitions of any functions. Uh, they don't have any... Um, macros that check whether something is a valid type. They just have the basic uh, definitions of, um, of the addresses of these peripherals uh, as, um, as, they, as they're implemented on STM32F4 in this case. So, next thing we have is the mode, uh, which I'm just going to make sure that this mode is actually um, ending up in the right place. So, am I using the mode anywhere? Let's see. Oh, okay. So, mode in this case is uh, has a different meaning because this this was the first implementation that I did of this driver, and it's not very flexible. Uh, so, I'm gonna uh, actually um, I'm gonna actually just define this as I'm going to print out an error first. Um, mode not defined. And, um, and the mode in this case is going to be uh, the, this is going to be directly sent to the, uh, to the timer initialization function. So let's see, here we have the timer here. And I keep uh, a table of, um, uh, of pointers to the uh, to the timer structure. This is a local structure that's only visible inside this file, uh, and uh, uh, there is a number of um, pointers to, to this structure, um, which are initialized uh, every time a new timer is uh, initialized in the device tree. So, um, uh, in this case, instead of doing it like this. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually initialize this timer. So I'm just going to copy some code here. Uh, so we have the time base in it. We have prescaler, uh, clock division. Yeah. Basically, this is a uh, time base initialization here. And that should also have the mode. Counter mode, right? So counter mode is the mode. And then I want to implement a smart way of setting the prescaler so that I can just specify the, the frequency of the, of the counter uh, instead of having to specify prescaler and period. Uh, let's see. Timer clock division. Uh, I'm, I'm going to actually bring up the data sheet for this, uh, for the STM32 that I'm working on. Uh, and then I'll just uh, check. Let's see, do I have it here somewhere? Maybe I have it. Um, Alright. STM32 F429 uh, PDF. I wonder if this one is the data sheet or the reference manual. I need the reference manual. This is the reference manual. Great. Uh, I want to check the difference between the prescaler and clock division.
searching, searching, searching. Searching, searching, searching. Come on. Okay, this bit field indicates the division ratio between the timer clock and the dead time and sampling clock. Okay, so um, so this is only uh, used for the dead time and um, and filtering. So uh, clock division is something that I don't actually need to set. I think for this um, because I'm not using. Um, Or actually, I will be using the dead time control. Uh, I think I will most definitely use the dead time control. So maybe maybe I will need to, to update this uh, this option. Um, but uh, by default, I'm going to set it to zero. Uh, and so here, I want to retrieve the option for clock division, uh, which is going to be just done like this. FDT get int or default. Uh, default is zero. And then also I'll get the repetition counter. Uh, the repetition counter uh, determines how many um, full uh, cycles. Uh, so a full cycle is uh, when the counter starts counting and then until it overflows and starts counting again from the from the beginning. Uh, so how many full cycles uh, it will run before generating update event, uh, and that is useful uh, for things uh, like uh, if if you wanna if you want the counter to count very quickly um, and maybe you don't have enough time to execute the interrupt on every single update event, uh, then the repetition counter can be used to. Um, reduce the number of update events uh, that, that you have to take care of. Um, and, uh, and that uh, lowers the, the load on the CPU. Uh, so it is, uh, it is quite useful uh, in some cases. So repetition count zero by default. Uh, frequency, uh, this will be set to the timer frequency. And I'm thinking of the, that I want this code to actually calculate the prescaler value automatically. So both the prescaler value and the reload value uh, based on the frequency value. So I'll have to think about that. Let's see, prescaler period. Uh, I'm going to check this uh, time of time. Let's see here. Uh, so this is not needed. Uh, our key channel. Uh, uh, um. I'll just remove all of that code. It's irrelevant for now. Output state polarity uh, pulse. Okay, so pulse was for the uh, for the PWM uh, output compare uh, outputs, uh, whereas uh, the period is uh, for the period of the timer. Uh, so the period would be um, defined by number of ticks uh, at the timer frequency, um, and uh, this value can be between zero and sixty-five thousand, uh, so zero x uh, ff ff, uh, and uh, that defines uh, how long it will take until the counter starts counting from, from zero again. Uh, and of course, uh, 
whether it starts counting from zero or um, goes backwards, that depends on the counter mode. Uh, so counter mode sets either uh, th the timer uh, to count in forward direction or in backward direction or uh, in mixed direction, where it actually counts upwards and then starts counting downwards. Uh, and that way you get uh, the PWM, uh, which is central aligned instead of edge aligned, uh, which is something that I'm going to be using uh, for this application. Uh, so um, this this should uh, this should be everything. Uh, so I need to set the prescaler, and I need to set the uh, period. And uh, the prescaler, uh, I'm trying to think which um, which frequency I need to use, um, which frequency the timer is actually going to be running at. Uh, I think it's going to be the AHB frequency, um, but I guess it would depend uh, on which bus the timer is on. Uh, so if we have a timer one, um, which which bus is timer one on? Uh, I could check this, I think. Hmm. Let's see. This will probably be in the RCC definition. Of course, before uh, doing any of that configuration, the timer first needs to be enabled. Uh, and um, I will do like this. APB1, um, yeah, RCCD, uh, RCC APB1. Um, And do we have the... No, we don't have the timer 1 here. Uh, so maybe it is on AHB. APB2 maybe? APB2 has uh, timer 1. Team 8 then? Is it on APB1? Nope. Team 8 is also on APB2. Obviously, I'm going to uh, write this code so that it's basically like a switch statement uh, based on Tim X. Uh, and I wonder if this will work, actually, because this is a pointer. Uh, because I have all the um, strictest uh, options set for GCC, it may actually complain that I'm comparing a pointer, uh, in which case I'll have to rewrite this as an if statement which is probably better in this case anyway. So if Tim x uh, equals Tim one uh, then we enable Tim one and basically uh, if Tim x equals Tim two uh, it's going to be the same thing here. Uh, and this is very tedious, but this is kind of how it needs to be done. Um, because we, we want to enable only the timers that we're using. So, Tim 2, and uh, 
and hopefully this will compile. Unless some of these timers are not an APB2. Right. Uh, mode prescaler and um, and the the frequency of the of the timer will actually then depend on the uh, frequency of p clock two. Uh, so R RCC clocks. Scalar. Let's see. So now we need to find the frequency uh, or the, the prescalar value and uh, the reload value uh, in order to match the frequency uh, that we desire. It's kind of nice to revisit the details of the timer implementation uh, now when porting this to the device tree. Because STM32 timers are very advanced and very powerful, um, and it's um, impossible to remember all the details. Um, I know the basic concept, but uh, for the details, I really need to read the data sheet. Um, uh, okay, so what I'm going to do actually is uh, I'll, I'll just um, do whatever makes sense here and then I'll test uh, the actual frequency of the timer uh, once uh, I get the PWM output uh, on, the, uh, on the output pins that go to the, uh, to the motor controller. Uh, and if there is any discrepancy uh, between the frequency that I set in the device tree and the actual frequency, then I'll uh, revise this uh, way of doing it. Uh, so... Um, Basically, what we want to do is um, find the prescalar value uh, for which uh, the frequency that the timer is running on, which in this case would be clocks uh, p clock two uh, frequency, uh, and uh, if we if we take that, uh, let's say that's one megahertz. That that that's going to mean that uh, if we just um, if we set the reload value to one, I think we should be, uh, or may maybe is it is it zero or one? 
I think it should be that we, if we set it to zero, then we should be getting uh, one megahertz uh, frequency. Uh, anyway, instead of instead of looking for this in the data sheet, uh, I'll just test uh, a solution and then I'll uh, see if, if it actually works. Uh, so frequency uh, divided by um, so the actual running frequency divided by the frequency. Uh, this would be our reload value, and the prescaler will need to be set to. I think there are some values uh, available for the prescaler. Okay. Uh, this can actually be any value between 0 and 65,000. Um, any 16 bit value. So while this um, this value is um, let's see, so this will be the period that we that we set um, the timer to. So while this value divided by prescaler and int. Obviously, frequency of zero is invalid. So while the, uh, the timer base frequency divided by prescaler uh, divided by the actual uh, frequency we want to run at is less than uh, the maximum value of the reload register. Um, and some counters here are going to be 32-bit counters. Um, so I may want to take that into consideration. Um, but for now, I'll just... Uh, work with 16-bit values. And while that is true, I guess we can just uh, increase the prescaler. Uh, and then uh, I can set, so while period is equals So this should uh, at least configure some value for the timer. Uh, and we can print this, print k, uh, tim.
and um, the base is going to be for now it's going to be just a, a p clock 2 frequency um, base equals oops try to compile this. So apparently team 2 is not present there, so where is team 2? ATB1. Okay, so changing back to this, APB1, uh, APB1, APB1. So it gets quite tricky um, because depending on what frequency uh, the bus is running on, uh, it's going to be different frequency for uh, different timers. Making this such a generic code ensures that uh, it's easy to configure the timer just by specifying frequency from the device tree. Uh, and obviously now we need to specify the base as well. the timer driver to my firmware. And I'm gonna try recompiling this. So uh, P uh, right P clocks. Of course that's not correct. To avoid the conversion errors, so uh, counter mode conversion from uh, to unit sixteen. Could have been that one. Conversion to long and signed int. So frac is int, frac is ink, int, and base is uint32. Okay, I see. That's that's why it's making this result an unsigned long. Um, so period uh, period can actually be unit 32. Now 
not quite sure where this error comes from. Actually, well, it's more than that. So why am I getting an error there? Prescaler. Where's prescaler? Clock is there, of course, and the uh, red count there. Um, so the only problem here is this conversion. But uh, where is it happening? Okay. Maybe I can get rid of the, uh, of the error if I just change that. No. Conversion to long unsigned yet. Oh, so there is another thing here. Uh, the rep counter cannot be larger than uh, 256 or 255. Uh, so this needs to be cast to uh, 16. And eight. But the period. Why should I use Atlet Studio? I downloaded Atlet Studio, but uh, why? So far I haven't seen anything besides possibly better debugging uh, that uh, is of any use to me. Frack is actually, oh, yeah, so Frack is actually uh, an int, so that could be the problem. Um, just Okay. 
bit better. And base is um, base is going to be actually set to zero. And then uh, if uh, this is else. Timer been initialized. Uh, it's probably because this is actually not compiled in because I haven't changed. Did I change all the time? Uh, STM32 Tim. from scratch. Flashing and flashing done. And uh, now we see the timers. Uh, so mode not defined for some timers. Uh, timer 1, base, uh, base frequency 49 megahertz. Uh, Prescaler 1 reload to uh, 2000. 722. Um, so the question is then, what is the frequency that I get? Right. So in theory, I should be getting 18 uh, kilohertz. Uh, question is what I actually get in practice. And uh, to see that, um, Let's see, maybe I actually can see it already. Can I see this already? I need to check which, uh, which test point I need to uh, put my scope to. So, I have a few test points. Let's see here. It would be motor number one. And um, TP23, 20, 25. Um, where is that? 23, 25 there. So, I'm pretty sure I need to do something else uh, besides doing this. So, that's not on. That's not on. Because I haven't actually configured the PWM mode. Uh, which I have to do next. So actually, what what I what I'm gonna do next is configure the channels. Uh, so I need to uh, I need to read the the channels. Um, hmm. So I need to read this tree uh, of all the channels and um, the channels also will have to have a reg property. Which will be set to the channel index. And, 
And the next question is, how do I do this in the device tree? How do I actually read uh, the tree uh, from, uh, or by using libfdt? I'm trying to remember if I did this anywhere before. So I have something that comes close. Uh, and that would be the, which driver was that? Would it be the GPI driver? Okay, so um, FDT uh, for each subnode uh, could be an option. And then possibly some way to get the name of the node. FTT subnode offset. And return value would be negative if there is an error. Um, so maybe just uh, searching for each. Um, each channel, um, something like a loop. Uh, okay, so maybe something like this. Uh, so instead of making things too complicated, uh, as I did in my device tree here, uh, I'll just remove the channels and just have the channels directly in the, uh, in the same section. And uh, what I can do then uh, is just I could just have a char more than zero, then we need to the channel. And um, why is it complaining? So channel D and then the C. Um, if node is more than zero, I can actually retrieve the properties of that node. Um, 
there's no need for reg anymore. So there's mode, uh, there is P uh, out L default value one. No, default value zero. Negative output enable uh, zero. Uh, pulse. This is the pulse width, the default pulse width. Uh, the default pulse width. Let's make this one actually zero. And um, positive polarity, negative polarity. Idle polarity on the positive pin, or actually the idle value uh, on the positive pin. Okay, and uh, then I think we could just stick this into uh, Tim. Uh, OC and type that maybe. No. Okay, so this is both output compare and also input capture. Uh, there are different modes on this, uh, on each channel configuration. Uh, Tim, uh, let's see. mode output state Enabled or disabled. Uh, 
So if that value is set, then uh, it's going to be Tim. Um, let's see. Oh, state enable uh, and otherwise disable. Pulse would be the number of. Um, so in terms of pulse, I think uh, it's it's probably better to define pulse as um, a value specified in perhaps nanoseconds, um, and then to convert that value to an actual uh, reload value uh, or output compare value uh, based on the prescaler of the timer. So. Um, for now, I'll uh, I'll set this to the value in the uh, device tree, uh, but uh, I'll rewrite this a bit later. So for now, I just want to get the uh, the period, uh, like any any kind of period, um, out of the output compare uh, pins, just so I can make sure that this configuration is being applied. So pulse and OC Tim OC polarity that would be Plus OC polarity high. Otherwise, ten OC polarity low. Ten OC M polarity high or low. state. Oh, okay. Yes, of course. Uh, this would be OC idle state set and uh, Tim OC idle state reset. Depending on which, uh, so switch C, uh, case 1, uh, it's going to be Tim OC1, init uh, Tim X OC break 2, 3, 4. I 
this should at least set some values. Should at least produce some result. Is a sunprintf uh, defined in std lib? idle state. No output. Did I forget something? Of course. Timer uh, three and four is obviously not uh, not initialized because uh, mode is not defined, but I think timer one should be initialized. So timer one should be actually running here. Oh, of course, I haven't enabled the timer. Um, that explains why it doesn't work. Uh, I need to make a call to TMCMD. Uh, I can actually put it here. So. Nothing on the outputs. Uh, I'm going to have a look at my device tree. So the device tree. Uh, 
Let me make this 50 for the hustle. I think this should be configured. Hmm. Base it and uh, I'll see one in it. So two, three, four. Hmm. Could it be that uh, this code is actually not running? Oh. Um, yeah. Of course, this should be using the node. So I was using the reference to the top level node. Yeah, now I should be getting something.
and we're not getting any results here. period uh, will need to be only the last 16 bits. Well, actually it's going to be the last 16 bits we already discussed. So that's not a problem. So time base in it. Set the prescaler and uh, I go through each channel and uh, configure the output compare. Uh, what else have I forgotten? What about what about preload perhaps? Or I have to look it up. There can be an issue with that. Also, something that's always good to do when uh, coding STM32 stuff uh, is to actually uh, call like Tim OC init uh, OC struct init, which will initialize the structure with uh, default values or zeros. And the same thing for the time base. There is a method for uh, each uh, structure that's part of the STM32 library. Oh, yeah. what am I doing? That, that was already there. Um, so just just for this one. So Tmax enable. Preload control is just to get rid of the glitches, um, so it shouldn't be affecting um, the configuration. I, I should still be getting some output, because I'm setting pulse and I'm setting polarity.
reload value of zero. Ah, I see. Could it be that hmm. Oh this is this was not correct. Uh, I think that what I need to do actually is set the prescaler to uh, whatever value we end up at n minus one. So let's see what this produces. Still no result, still nothing. What can go wrong? Hmm. I think I may be on to something. Repetition counter, capture compare, dead time.
There we go. I remember there is some uh, some kind of uh, functionality uh, in the F4 that uh, we need to actually explicitly enable uh, the output. Where is this register? BDTR register. Main output enable. This bit is cleared asynchronously by hardware as soon as the break input is active. Okay, so uh, what is the default value? Uh, reset value is zero. So uh, outputs are disabled, uh, and obviously we have to enable them. Uh, which kind of explains why uh, this was not enabled. I'm not getting anything out, uh, anything uh, on the outputs of the timer. So, team control PWM outputs. And this is uh, this is only one bit, so this will be a tmax enable. And, um, This is going to produce something. Yay! It's actually working. So the next step is to check what frequency this is running at. And uh, I'm going to output uh, the waveform in just a short while. Uh, I'm just going to check myself what it's running at. So this is, this is running at... This is running at 9 kilohertz. Yeah. I'm going to show what this looks like. Uh, I can do it using this application. Waveform. BTMC, we're not connected. We should be connected. Just a permissions issue. And uh, waveform. Um, this is a really basic way of doing this. Will it even work? Yeah, so this is what it looks like. Channel one. Uh, 
and uh, the period uh, of this waveform uh, or the frequency of this waveform is uh, 9 kilohertz. Uh, so that means that uh, I'm dividing the clock too much. Maybe actually too little. Let's see how this works. is produced slower frequency. So the frequency is 18,000 and the prescaler is 1 and the base is 49 I'm still not happy about this solution. This does produce something that's close to 18 kilohertz, but uh, I'm not very happy about this solution. But at least it works, at least it's uh, producing a PWM signal. And I'm going to check if I'm also getting the inverted signal as well. So I'm not getting the inverted signal. Uh, I'm just getting the same uh, polarity, which is uh, which is probably because I'm uh, inverting the positive polarity. Okay, this is a start at least. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.